So let's walk through using PowerShell to find the source of a, of a user's lockout in Active Directory. So I want you to imagine that it's the middle of the night, you've getting repeated phone calls from the CEO, demands to know why they've been locked out. Well, you know it takes 20, 30 minutes to get VPN'd in, pull up the event viewer after you've already peed to the server, and then find that lockout and then look for the source. You know, you can keep doing that or, great opportunity to learn some PowerShell. So first couple of things we'll need to know to be able to do this with PowerShell, I've got a test user that I'm going to be using, calling it user001. The lockout ID for an account lockout is 4740. The way the lockouts work is that the PDC emulator will always have an event in their event log for the lockout. So we need to find the PDC emulator using the get80 domain commandlet out of the Active Directory module. And we can see in our demo environment here, it's just prod DC. And so then I'm going to assign that to the PDC emulator variable. And then what we'll need to do is query the event log on that computer for that event ID. So you can see here, I'm using the filter hash table parameter. It's my favorite parameter and specifying the log name and the ID. So if we run this, we've got a couple of users that have been locked out. And what I want to do is to then parse that for the pertinent information and return just that. So, so I'm gonna take that same commandlet. I'm gonna run it again and assign it to the events variable. And then we can look at the message property for that variable. This is all the information we need. So we got the username, we've got the caller computer name. So the caller computer name, that's where the lockout originated from. We can either parse that with regex because regex is amazing, or we could save ourselves some time and look at the property of those events. Because you can see here that we've got all that information from before. And so looking at this list and comparing it to what we've got above, we can see that index of zero is the username and index of one is the caller computer name. I've got that written out here. And then we need to specify this specifically the value on that property as well. So if we look at just that property zero, so the username, you can see that it's actually a, an, an object with the property of value. So we're gonna look at the value property of that object. And the computer name is the same thing as well, but index of one. And so then if we've got multiple events, we're gonna, of course, wanna run it through a for each loop. And so I'm doing that here and I'm outputting it as a PS custom object. So I'm grabbing the information that I think is important and then just outputting it as its own custom object. So if we run this for each loop, we can see that we had two lockouts, one for users user one and one for the test user. So after doing something like that, the last thing I like to do is to make it into a function. So of course, I'm gonna have to do this over and over and over. So I don't wanna leave it as just a snippet of code. So I've got a function here that I've written called get 80 user lockout source. In the parameter lock, you can see that it takes one parameter called same account name. And I've called it same account name so that I can accept pipeline input. So you can see value from pipeline by property name equals true. And the idea being that you can output get 80 user or search 80 account to this commandlet and it'll work. I love the pipeline, it's great. For the begin block, uh, the PDC emulator, that's gonna be the same for every single object passed to it. So that's why it's in the begin block. And then the process block, uh, you can see that I have that same commandlet from before, except line 78. I'm using the where object commandlet to filter for just the events that are like that one user. And then for each event in events, I'm of course outputting that, that custom object from before. So I'm gonna add this to my session. So we've got some examples here. So the first thing, uh, the base use of it is just specifying the parameter with a username. So we've got my user from before, my test account. If I run that, it just outputs one object, one user that's been locked out once. And so then if I run a search AD account for locked out users, and I want to run this first to see if there are any. So there aren't any currently. I run something as a different user. And we had what user was 001. All right, there we go. So we got, we got an account that's locked out. Uh, so now if we run search AD account again, we actually have a locked out account. So then we can pipe that to get 80 user lockout source. And you can see that we've got two entries this time. So one for just now, so 1020 and one for earlier at 930. The last example I wanted to give is outputting this to a CSV uh, because you may need to give this information to someone else. They can look at it in a spreadsheet or whatnot. And so I'm gonna specify a CSV path. And then I'm going to run the search 80 account, same thing from before, but I'm piping that output to the export CSV commandlet and specifying the CSV path that I had just now. And of course, no type information and forced to override it if it's there. 
And then looking at that CSV file, here's what it looks like. So we've got just one user that was locked out, um, but in this case, it's getting all events. And if you had a program to open uh, CSV files, it would of course open in that, so I don't have Excel installed in this DC, uh, for good reason. <laughs> so that is how you use PowerShell to find the source of a user account lockout inactive directory.